Hello everybody and welcome back to Let and Farm, the survival series. Now we're at the pub, we're going to knock on the door, even though chances are Dennis is not going to answer. So here goes, because what we want to do is get a hold of him so that we can uh, sort out this combine mess. I'm not holding out too much hope. Mm-hmm. Yep, as usual. No response. Useless, absolutely useless. Anyway, the good news is we do have a team coming down this afternoon to come and examine the common harvester and basically to try and figure out what caused the problem. If they can sort it, then at least we're a step closer. It doesn't mean we can move it though, because that is still again uh, to do with Dennis's insurance company, because obviously it's his common harvester. At least I think it's his common harvester. Who knows now? The fact that he's just disappeared is incredibly suspicious and again, nobody has been to his field. Still no fertilising or anything. So if he doesn't ever return, his crop is just going to die. Um, but uh, yeah, as if we care, because his crop is uh, nothing to us anyway. We just want to get this combine mess sorted out. Terrible. Right, okay, anyway. Peter Wood, thankfully, has already sent an email to us, so we don't even need to speak to him. He said, can we do the, basically, the silage over in field number three? He said, we can just basically choose anything. We can use our windrower or his windrower. I might just use a bit of uh, both. I'll probably use both. Um, I really want to use this, but it might not be big enough for the entire field. So, yeah, I'm going to use that to begin with, just to mess around with. And he said that he's got a worker coming down from his other farm who's going to bring the forager. I'm guessing his forager is a big one, not a trailed one, because his other farm apparently is bigger than this farm. As far as I can understand, he only has three fields here and this yard. Uh, yep, so there you go. Here's the common harvester still sat over there. Not much chance of it moving. And yep, no progress with the uh, ride on mower either. It's all not looking very good. Anyway, we've filled up our water bottle again tap water from from our house and yeah we just <laughs> we don't have much to eat um, I've been picking up a few eggs from here Peter Wood said it's all right so we've been eating boiled eggs most days I think yeah what I'm gonna do is just have a play around with this and then we'll use the other windrower because we've got quite a bit of work to do today and I don't really want to be spending forever just rowing it up. Chances are somebody else is going to help us with the, uh, the moving of the grass anyway, the silage. So that should help. What was that? That cat's eye. I've just run over a cat's eye. Uh, right, so here we go. It doesn't need to dry because we are just basically picking it up and fermenting it. Now I've never used a single one like this before on a vintage tractor so I might not be very good at using it but uh, yeah let's just see here yeah chances are I'm gonna do this completely wrong but it's just to uh, try it out I'm guessing that would go like this and then come back on the other one and put it together I don't know actually I don't know our experience isn't the best in this field very good very good pun there So, yeah, we'll go around the headland and then we'll go, I assume, the other way and put it into one. Well, I might be doing it completely wrong. Anyway, it all seems to be working well. Nicely repainted windrow. Looks much better than it did do. And look at those trees now. They <laughs> they're absolutely towering above us. I'll tell you something, the saplings he bought were obviously really good them to grow so quickly. They're from the crate over there. We still have the crate, but we don't have any uh, saplings left. That's once round. Now this way, I suppose. But that is the good thing about the double windrow. It is much easier to get a decent row. So that is obviously putting two into one. 
It's nice though, and it is nice to be able to use the 135 for something. Even if it is only for like a hobby, because it's not really up to the speed of our modern day tractors. Right, that's that's looking alright, I suppose. Hmm. Now the tractor we're going to use is the Case. I think the Case is going to be a good tractor for the job. He's always said just pick any tractor, so that's the approach we're going to take today. He might come out and see us, I don't know. In fact, I don't even know if he's in. But there you go. That is the small windrower in use. But yeah, we need to move on. Especially as I don't know when this uh, forager is going to turn up. It could turn up any minute, in which case they're going to be waiting for us, which won't be any good at all. So I must hurry up. Quiet road today at least, that's good. Nine hens. And here we go. Yeah, the case tractor is kept over at the dairy farm. So we're going to have to run over there and get it. But the windrower, I believe, is kept in this shed just over here. Yep, there it is. And that's going to need to move because that's where it's going to come to. But that is a job for later. The priority is to row it up. There might be a team of us doing it, actually. I don't know if there's going to be uh, numerous tractors. Here it is. The Case 50,000, 5150. Very nice tractor. So, yeah, oh, look at that mess. Absolute mess. He, he said he was just going to put the manure in there for storage, but that is nasty. I suppose it's because the cows are outside at the moment, so it doesn't really matter. He's going to have to get that moved fairly soon. That's horrible. <laughs> That's really horrible. Anyway, I can see the tractor in there, actually. In fact, that might be where he's working at the moment. He might be moving it. Just hitch it on. Put the PTO on as well. And we should be able to make some fairly short work of this. Mind out the way, chickens. We are still doing alright for money. Which is good. Obviously nowhere near as good as it would have been if we had managed to sell everything which was in the field. Uh, if it hadn't burnt out. I mean, what are the chances? It's very suspicious. I can't believe that in the short time that we were using it, we managed to catch fire and just basically burn the entire field to nothing. It is suspicious. If he hadn't gone missing, it would have been fine. Okay, so we're taking four. Obviously, uh, the swaths of grass which are here aren't very large because it was done with the very small finger bar mower. So it might take a bit of getting in position correctly with the tractor. But it would be good if I can make this as neat as possible. Should be able to. Should be able to do it fairly neatly with this. just seen that the forager is here and it's not what I expected at all. As I said I thought it might be a self-propel one but it's clearly not. In fact it's very old. It's an old Matthew Ferguson one by the look of it. Um, although a very nice Matthew Ferguson setup. I can't get quite up to the trees so I think, well, actually it might be a good thing that it's one so small because we might be able to get under the trees with it. So let's just finish this here. Pretty good timing. I don't know how long it's been there for exactly. I didn't see it pull in. But yes, hopefully they haven't been waiting too long. In fact, as it is just the one machine, hmm, the driver's gone, so they must be expecting us to do everything, which is fair enough. 
So we'll put this back into the yard. We'll keep the case attached to it for the time being. Just in case he has more fields to do. Oh, look at this. Unbelievable. Try not to run over the chickens. Yeah, we'll park here. We are going to, at some point, have to move the trailer out of the pit. We'll probably do that with our tractor. Uh, we'll do it now. <laughs> I was going to say we'll do it with our tractor when we bring the first load in, but it's absolutely no point. I've been mean, getting out of the tractor just to do this, so we'll do it now. As the driver's gone, there's nobody waiting for us, so yeah, it looks like the time isn't really uh, against us anymore, which is good. As long as we get it done today, which really shouldn't be too difficult because it's not even a very big field, unless he does say that there is another big field to do, which there could be, I'm not too sure. Right, so there we go. Yeah, we're not casting with this today. It would have been fun, but yeah, we don't really have the time. Oh, well, we do have the time, but we don't have uh, the time to be messing about. Okay, so this is going to be fun. Looking forward to this. suppose we're going to have to drop off the trailer. Oh, actually, maybe I should have brought the case tractor back. I might have been better off detaching the trailer and reattaching it to the case every time it's full. We'll see how we go. Hopefully it all works alright. This seem like a nice setup though. Right, we turn the beacon off. Uh, switch it on. Very nice. That is working really well. In fact, it's fairly easy to use as well. Even though we've never used this before. Big setup though. Oh, there is a wall. Uh, I might have been better off going the other way around the field actually. We'll come back for that. We're not going to be able to do that. Okay, so we'll go for this piece here. This swath. Good, that's all working alright. I'm, I'm so impressed with the finger bar mower though on the 135. It's cut this really well. And the, the manure that we spread on here, that's increased the yield. Pretty good yield. Can't see in the trailer, so I'm not quite sure how much is in there, but I'd imagine looking at the size of these swaths, it's pretty full. Eventually we'll see it mounding over the top. Right. I think when we get to the end of here, we're going to have to jump out and see how, exactly how full it is. I think it'll be almost time to unload. There's no window in the trailer, so we can't really see. Right, let's just switch things off. Uh, climb up. There's no ladder. Hmm. Try and climb up here. Whoa, that is quite full. So it's, it's a very productive field. Very nice. We'll try and cram a bit more in. But yes, we're going to have to get another tractor back over here. Because I don't really want to detach the tractor from the forager every time. Right, I can see it piling over. We're going to stop it there. Detach the trailer. To pull the pin out. There we go. And we'll pull forward. Out of the way. It'd be ideal if we had somebody else helping us with another tractor alongside. But, yep. Obviously, we are not going to uh, go to that length today. We're going to have to do it all ourselves. I suppose it's because of the size of the field. They might be working somewhere else. Maybe they do have a self-propelled forager. But they're just in a different field. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we do seem to get stuck with these smaller fields. Right. Uh, yeah, we'll go for the case. Seems to be the best tractor for the job. Go 
gate shut. And nobody assessing the situation there yet. That's a shame. Hope they turn up. Okay, so, yeah, we're going to have to, as well, at some point, start compacting the pit. But looking at the size of the field, the amount we're going to get off it will likely mean that we don't have to do it until the end. So we'll just put it all in there, and then we'll level it out. We'll probably use the front-loaded tractor if we're allowed to. Yeah, I can't really see any reason why we wouldn't be able to use it. Because, um, yeah, it allows us to use all the other tractors. So... Load number one. Here we go. Get it right to the back. I think what we'll do is we'll do this one in the middle, next one to the left, and then one to the right, and we'll just basically gradually drive forwards as we go. I think that was all the way to the back. That'll keep a fairly even spread. There we go. So what's that looking like? Yeah. <laughs> Not a great deal. That is a small pile. Do we have any lights in here? No. We do have lights. Oh, we maybe hang on. Yes, we do. That's good. We need lights. Okay, let's put the trailer down. Don't want it to hit the roof. And we will return for load number two. Pillar in the uh, the cab there is always in the way for pulling out. Back onto the forager, and we'll get this job done. Already half past one. I can't believe how quickly this day is going. Time is flying. I'm starting to get hungry. We can't even go to the pub and buy any food. It's not good. Hungry. Hmm. Right. Well, we'll sort that out in a minute. The hunger, that is. But first, I just want to get a bit more of this done. But I can't keep going on forever. So hungry. so close to completion. I just can't believe how long it's taken. It's almost half past five and we're even hungrier now. Wow. Super hungry. Uh, we do have some eggs that we can eat when we get back but it would be so nice to be able to go buy something else because we, we don't want to just keep eating eggs. Anyway there is a piece here that needs to be picked up. So just getting the uh, bit right from the edge and then I think we're done. I'm going to leave the tractor on this sort of concrete pad here because uh, obviously somebody drops it off. They didn't speak to us, so I don't really know what they want to do with it, but yeah, if we just leave it here, then at least we've put it back where we got it from. So, yes, I'm just going to uh, drop off the trailer again, I think. 
Yeah, then I can put this tractor with the forager over here. And then we'll bring the trailer back with the case tractor and put it with it. So we just park it neatly somewhere here. There we go. Such a nice tractor to operate though. I'm putting it in the middle because we, we do need to put the trailer on the back again. Uh, so over to the case tractor. I don't think we're going to get compacting done today. But we'll at least update Peter Wood on the current situation. I wonder if they've been to the common harvester to assess it. Hopefully they have. Right, off we go. I'll be honest, it doesn't look as full as I was expecting, uh, but hopefully it was still what Peter expected. Be good if it is. Right, there we go. I have no idea how many litres it is, but it looks like... I don't know, 50,000? 50, Around that. I'd say 50,000. Okay, so before we put it back, I'm just going to jump out here and update Peter. Just tell him what we've done. Great. We'll need to put some more fertiliser on that field in a few days' time. Here is your payment for today's work. By the way, if you're looking for somewhere to buy food, I'd recommend Gary Turner. He's at the old farm near to field number 9. He's a bit odd, but you'll get used to him. Well, that was good pay. That was very good. And he recommends someone. Right, so we're going to have to go and take a look because I am starving. I've no idea what they sell, but yeah. Let's just go and take the trailer back first. You see the column here <laughs> in the cab? It blocks the view. I'll really quickly pull across there. Swing round and drop off the trailer. There we go. Yeah, so um, I'll put that there for the time being. We're going to have to reverse back, I suppose, and reattach this just to make it fair. I can't really leave it detached. Oh, that pipe needs folding in too. Hopefully that is close enough. It is good. And the engine can be switched off. Okay. We'll put this tractor back, we'll jump in on, well, I was going to say into, onto our 135, and we'll head over to this other farm near to Fidelman 9. Hmm. Gary Turner. But he's a bit strange, apparently, so. We'll have to watch out. Well, I think Dennis was a bit strange. Hopefully, he's strange in a good way. Oh, that light is switched on, too. Oh, the insurance people. Or the inspecting people. I forgot to ask. Hmm. Well, they're not there now. Well, when we come back tomorrow, I'll ask him. See how it went. If they turned up, they better have done. Okay, so uh, this switch here. There we go. The 135 is here. Take the trailer off. And we're going to have a drive over to the far side. Oh, look, that crop's ready to harvest again. Seems like it's always ready to harvest. Okay, so this is the only farm at the end of here. Must be this place. I'm assuming it isn't an actual shop. It's just somewhere to buy things from. Hmm. It's definitely a small little farm. Wait, small and little mean the same thing. Okay, ooh, the switch. Uh, where's the house? Here's the house. How did I miss the house? Oh, can I help you? You can indeed. Uh, we'd like to buy some food. Oh, very good. Here you go. Take a look around. Okay, so we've got a wide range of things here. Cheese, four pounds. Farm burger, eight pounds. Steak, 12 pounds. Fruit juice, two pounds. Water, two pounds. They're very similar to what um, Dennis had and fresh fruit and vegetables two pounds per kilogram so it's not cheap if you got a good deal then there is something wrong yeah uh, 
You wouldn't usually advertise that, but yeah, I'm going to go for the burger. The farm burger. Sounds very nice. Eight pounds, wow. And uh, I'm a bit tired of water, to be honest. We'll go for fruit juice as well. Ten pounds, uh, I think that'll do. But uh, it's nice to have a bit of a change. Not too sure how much cheese you get. Anyway, yes, we'll uh, go to the checkout. See you again soon. Wow, he was uh, something. I expected him to have a deep voice, but <laughs> uh, no, definitely not. Okay, well, uh, that's £10 spent, but at least we have food. That's really good. I'm going home, and we're going to have some food later. So, yep, off we go. It's getting late. I probably should have uh, driven into his driveway, actually. More space to turn around. Right. Let's go and park up. Very nice sunset, that's for sure. Very nice. And the roads are quieter this time. Oh, no, wait, sorry, there's two cars. They're quieter. We're past rush hour. Hmm, all the cars are on the other side of the road. Luckily, our side is quiet. Right, so, uh, Dennis won't be in. No point bothering with him. Yep, here we go. This is our house just here. So, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. And until next time, see you again very soon. Bye for now.